I'd like to greet everyone in the peace of the Lord. I will invite the church to stand up. Let's open up our Bibles in the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 2. Look. Look. Look 2. What are we going to do? Are we going to do something different today? Yeah. From verse 8, we're going to read the children. Where are the children and the lessons? Are they there? The teachers can help. The, the children and the lessons. You're going to read chapter 2 of Luke, from verse 8 to 13. And then 14. They're going to read all together. So then the whole church reads 14. So let's go. Hey, that's good. It's in the projection there. So the children, they read with the teachers, and the adolescents. Let's go. See if the adolescents can read well. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which will be to all people for there is born to you this day in the seed of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord and this will be the sight to you you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying the whole church now glory to God in the highest and on earth peace uh, goodwill toward men the church may be seated well Christmas we always have, right? Very well. It's a good season. I love Christmas. People sometimes they criticize Christmas. There are a lot of people that criticize Christmas. I don't criticize Christmas. I like it because I like to receive gifts. I don't like to give it, but I like to receive it. But this is an idea. an idea that Christianity, generally speaking, has of what we know, which is history. That Christianity made it, was a landmark in history, since, after all, uh, history is divided between before and after Christ. But what calls uh, uh, the attention and make us stop sometimes on those moments like this that calls our attention it is to see what is the relationship and what is importance that this was for humanity, for men if we pick up the moment in which Israel was, Israel was Leaving when Jesus was born, Israel was leaving a very difficult moment. The prophet, the prophets, there was no ministry of prophecy for more than for almost 400 years. It was called the period between uh, interbiblical. And for I Israel, a generation less is 100 years. For Israel, it's like this. They say that a generation for the Jews less is 100 years so then they were for four generations without a prophet 
So, the majority of those that were there, they were living an experience of just history. God was just history. Israel was a people that lived off of a tradition, religious tradition, that was historic. They spoke of the prophets. They spoke about the history of, of their predecessors. They spoke of the patriarchs, the great prophets. But it was always history. And the prophecies of the Old Testament pointed out to this moment. They were living in the Bible according to the prophecy. They were living a period which was called the Fourth Empire, which, which was called the Gentilic Empire, which was the Roman Empire that controlled the entire world. Their, what they expected was that it was happened to them what God has done with Moses, with Joshua, with Gideon, or that someone would arise, not, not the Savior, but a leadership that could cause them to overcome the Romans, or maybe a military leadership, someone that could maybe a miracle like what God did with the others that the history spoke to them that would allow them to overcome the Romans, deliver them from the yoke of the Roman Empire. That's how the people thought. They didn't, they were not expecting the Messiah. And that's why you see that the passage of Jesus was a little contradictory for the Jews. At one point they applaud him Blessed be the, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And then later on they will say, condemn him, crucify him. Because in truth, what they expected was not for a messiah, messiah or a savior. They were waiting for a, a political leadership. But all of it shows a relationship we're going to have make a comparison. This is important. I believe that the dates, they're important to bring us back to a moment of reflection. You can make a parallel, parallel between the church and Israel. In fact, they are both peoples of God, one in one dispensation and the other in another. And they both have a relationship very strong. Uh, because God uses Israel as an illustration to show the church uh, its moments, its his time. Israel always has a relationship with the church. And when we look and we see the moment in which Israel was living at that moment at that time, the day when Jesus was born, what was happening with the people? Jesus was born in early morning. Everybody was sleeping. Everybody was sleeping. The religious, they were sleeping. There was no prophecy. The world was living completely distant from the truth, from the prophecies. Why? Because the people had sunk into their apostasy, they had gone astray from the basic basic principles that the whole Bible taught and the prophets taught. They had gone astray from all of it. So God for them was just history. Like today, like today. If we pick up today, us who are Christian, that we are not we are not Jewish. We are Gentiles, but we are the church. If we look at the Christian world today and make a comparison, those are very similar moments. The moment of Israel there was the arrival of the Messiah. Israel was completely um, 
unconcerned about the arrival of Jesus. The Israel was sleeping. And when this early morning, when the angel proclaimed to the uh, shepherd that were in the vigil early dawn, the angel told them, I bring a great news. Was born in Bethlehem, a news that Savior. And the shepherd, they have been awoken for the moment, and they saw the moment, and Israel was sleeping. So if we look to Christianity, generally speaking today, it is the same thing. If we look to the distance that exists between the beginning of the church and the Pentecosts and our days, in the time of Israel, in the time of, time of Jesus, the whole world was pagan. In Israel, who had to have knowledge of God, was living more with history and philosophy. And philosophy controlled the world at that time, which was the Greek philosophy. If we pick up it today, it's the same thing. If we bring it to our days, how Christian lives today, we are now speaking about Christmas, the whole world. Especially Western world speaks about Christmas, something beautiful, the lights, some interesting things. But Christianity did something very interesting. It completely distorted everything. Everything. If you show a man with a big beard and a red hat coming from the North Pole with a, a slate, what the heck does he have to do with Christianity? And uh, Christmas before the past Christmas, I was making. I was in a walk, and the um, mayor of the city. He's my my friend. He's a doctor as, as well. He's a very good friend of mine. He called me and he said, "My beloved, I was doing my walk uh, on the the beach. It was the 24th, and he called me and said, "My beloved, I want to say this wonderful, beautiful day to desire you." Uh, Merry Christmas. And I said, thank you very much, Mayor. And uh, in this day, the, the child Jesus uh, light up your life. And uh, I asked uh, the Mayor, what child? Uh, that child Jesus, what? And I said, the, the boy has rose, grew up. He died and resurrected. But this is this... In the same way Israel was living at that time, religion, tradition, and the, the customs, it was a history for the people that mentioned and Jesus after his ministry in the celebration of the tabernacles. He saw the people and, and noticed that the people was living uh, the history, mentioning about the past and, and rejoicing with what was the past could have been something interesting, but the people was completely uh, distorted uh, Christian, um, the doctrine in the same way it happens today. People are not concentrating on the meaning of Christmas. And the moment in which Israel, in Israel was, when Jesus arrived for the first time, is emblematic for the moment of the church that is preparing for Jesus to come. No, but now, for the second time, when Jesus is coming for the second, there is a relationship that is very strong. The destruction of Israel and the destruction of Christianity today. The enemy of our souls. What does he do? He distracts the attention only to place in the minds The faith uh, that vanishes. It was exactly what happened with the Church of Pagans. And what does the enemy do? He's very wise. He is cunning. He transforms Christianity into something mystical. Isn't it true? It's something mystical. So, so then you see, the history when we speak about Christianity, what we're living today, Christmas. Like Pastor T said, Religion. Religions are very uh, pleasing. 
Uh, tasty. Uh, they're great. The Christianity is out there is something wonderful. Why? Because Christianity out there, what, what do they think? Christmas is turkey. I don't know if you eat turkey here, but in Brazil, you eat turkey. The best gift you can give and uh, is a uh, Chester turkey, is a special brand of per turkey. Then March and Easter is chocolate. It's pie. And on and on. So this Christianity is only concerned, not only with the heaven, but it's concerned with the palate, the, the taste buds. So this is just history. If, and Christianity lives this, and they get involved. And I remember my daughter, she was the youngest. She was in school, and, um, and the teacher asked her to make uh, a homework about Easter. And she, my daughter asked me to help her, and I helped her, prepared everything for her. Next week, she comes back, and she was there, very upset. And my daughter said, you don't know anything. What I, say? I got zero, got F for my test, my homework. Well, my teacher gave me F, F, yeah. And, and, and the homework I wrote, Easter, the word comes from Hebrew, it comes at pass, passing over at the moment in which the Jewish people left Israel. And I wrote all of it, the first month of the year, called the Judaic calendar, it called the Ajib, it was the 14th day, and I wrote everything for her, and she got an F. And then I went there to speak with the teacher. That she, she probably had a, an IQ of a crab. <laughs> so the teacher said that she did everything wrong, she was not what I was expecting. But then I said, are you a Christian? And she said, of course I am. Yeah. Yeah, so you're a Christian. Very well. Easter is something very interesting because the, the rabbit, if it spoke, it would complain that it would say, look, I have nothing to do with Easter. I'm so small. I have big ears. The problem is with the sheep. I'm a, I'm a, a rabbit. I'm different. Lady, it's just to, to make things worse. You ask the, the, the rabbit to put an egg. The, the rabbit is an, as a mammal. It, it's even worse, the egg, chocolate egg. My brother, Christianity is here, lost in the superstition and the, the mythologies. The youth don't believe in anything anymore. I spoke to a pastor in Denmark, and he told me that the average of age on Denmark of the ch evangelical church is 60, 60 years of age. There is no youth. Why? Because they got lost in mysticism. They enter into philosophy. So God is a philosopher. It's like a friend of mine that said once, he told me something. It was a, a my friend from college, and he told me, Amadeus. I believe in God. I believe in God. But Amadeus, God is the positive energy. God is a positive energy. You cannot think about negative things. Every time you think of, about negative things, God is not in it. God is in the positive, positive energy. He's moving forward. And I said, so then I have a suggestion for you. What? Entering to the bathroom, bare food with everything wet, without shoe, and uh, put your fingers on the electrical outlet, and you receive uh, uh, such a positive energy, so great, that you see God. <laughs> you see God, you see angels, you see everything. My brethren, are you laughing? That's what the world is living. What was Israel living that moment? It's a wonderful 
night, a prophetic night, mm -hmm. where God visits the world through His Son. What a wonderful project of rescue, man. Israel was sleeping, but didn't die when they condemned him to death. They were all awoken. They died when he was born, but on the day of his death they were awoken. Isn't it this similar to the day in which we're living? In the book of Revelation speaks of the, this moment, the moment call of uh, the, call, the time called Son, the moment in which you will be coming the second time. The description from Revelation is very clear. The judgment of a nature, right? The judgment upon the nature, the judgment upon the government. You have any doubt about it? You have any doubt that there is a judgment upon the nature, the forests are going vanishing, the polluted rivers, the fish are all dying? It's all in the book of Revelation. The Bible says, the nat nature moans, it's all prophetic. This is the trumpets. So, you see the, the pollution of the rivers and oceans. The death of the oceans and the, the forests vanishing, and this is all prophetic. It's a judgment upon nature and the government. No, never the governments were so scared. They're all afraid of North Korea. They're afraid of the biological war. They're all worried about Jerusalem. So all the governments are in panic. It's all biblical. There's a judgment upon flesh, about ma upon man. And Christianity, you know how Christianity lives? You know how do they live? Speaking about cures. Look, my brother. God from eternity said, I'm going to send my son because there is not a, a single good doctor on earth. God will be the doctor. He will be the man. He's going to go there to cure everybody. It looks like it seems like people understand the project of Jesus as a project of a great doctor that came to the world just to cure everybody. But the, but doesn't Jesus cure? And yes, Jesus cures. Jesus operates wonder. But people forget that Jesus came to perform a wonderful project, which is to rescue men. So Christmas is a date which uh, uh, that should bring us in to have a reflection to, to a moment of reflection I don't like cliches professor of uh, essays don't like cliches sometimes when you write an essay you write cliches to call people to a reflection is a cliche but that's true a reflection what is the moment that we're living now what is going on I said on the church yes, yesterday in Newark. I was in Brazil. A brother called me. Madu, pastor, pastor. What a difficult we're going through. You see what the crazy one did. The president of the United States, the crazy one. What did he do? He recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. So the crazy is you. Why, Pastor? Maybe I'm not an American. I'm not in favor or against Americans. But let me tell you something. What he did was part of a program, of a plan. We may have not known what he, he did. I'm not saying it's not a revelation. I'm not prophesizing anything. The, the name, his name sounds like a trumpet. <laughs> So when he said Jerusalem, it is in the Bible. Jerusalem is part of Israel, and everything is prepared in Jerusalem, because the world will be judged in Jerusalem. Everything is prepared for Jerusalem, so everything is part of the plan. Is another reason for us to make a, to ref, make a reflection and ask ourselves what is going on? Where is this goal? This world going towards? What is the moment that we're living in? What is the Bible speaking about this? We need to stop and, and say, that it's the moment that Jesus said, when the things happen, these things happen, look to heavens and 
get ready because my arrival is near. So Christmas for us is a beautiful celebration of joy, peace, fellowship, the, the Christian world, and these beautiful songs. It's interesting, right? I remember when I was a kid, I was not a Christian. So then, I was adolescent. When I was adolescent, I was a little uh, more pure, more innocent. Because when I was adolescent, I would, you know, I used to put my shoes on the w the window, and other kids would say, "What is this, Santa Claus?" I don't believe in Santa Claus, but I believed it. I would put the shoes on the window, and I was waiting for Santa Claus. I was waiting for his slate to arrive with a bunch of lights, and there was someone that, that someone would get uh, dressed in all red, and he would. Uh, some parents would dress up as Santa Claus just to keep this uh, illusion on the children. So, so beautiful things and innocence of the child. Nothing wrong with that. It's valid. But us, as a church. In this moment in which we're living, that's why we can receive and give gifts. Nobody is against this, but we need to stop and meditate and think. In the moment in which we're living, are we living in the, the same moment in which Israel, Israel was living? Is it possible that Israel was for Jesus in his birth? The same was, uh, the same way as Christianity is today for Jesus in his second coming. Jesus came. Israel didn't recognize him. Is it possible that Jesus will come and the majority of Christianity will still not know? They will not get ready? This is a special moment for us. Which is the time. So, as time passes by, things pass by in a very a great speed. The prophecies are coming in a very high speed. Interesting that two years ago, we s began speaking about the time called soon, testify about the time called soon. And so these events are happening, nobody be confused. Israel has uh, a participation in this. In Jerusalem, it is the center of everything. And I always say this, I'm afraid of Jerusalem, they're going to put a bomb there. Nobody's going to put a bomb in Jerusalem, don't worry about it. In Jerusalem, there will be no bomb falling there. Not a single missile hit there. You can write it down. The Lord is not going to allow this to happen. It, Jerusalem is going to be like this, like that. They will fight around it, but nobody will touch it. You know why? Because God is preparing Jerusalem for the final judgment. And the world will see this. But the Bible says that the church will leave earlier. It will come back later to fight with Israel, but it will leave first. And this is the moment that precedes the second arrival of Jesus. And as he said, the disciples, they came close to the temple and said, what a wonderful thing. They're impressed. And they said, look, who was not going to be stone upon stone on the temple. So they are going to destroy the temple and they will rebuild the temple. The Jews didn't understand anything. So then he went to the mount and they were amazed and they asked, Master, when are you coming back? When are, You said you're leaving and you're coming back. When is it going to happen? And speak about the end of the world. Speak to us. And he begins to describe in chapter 24 what is going to be his arrival. It's like he's describing our days. Have you read it? It, it looks like he's describing our days. Look, go, on, go there and see where he speaks about the governments, where he speaks about the sign, the physical signs on nature, when he speaks about man, uh, man's nature. It's all there on chapter 24. It sounds like he was describing our times. And in fact, in the book of Revelation, the Bible says that 
We are the Church of Laodicea, which is the last church. And this last church, the Lord said the following to John. I'm at, at the door and knock. If somebody opens it up, I will enter. That's the moment. And now bringing the service to close, my brethren. What we need to understand at this moment is that Christmas for us is a moment of reflection. People speak about it. Christmas, so the oppression, people use it to explore the commerce. You know, don't worry about it. But we need to understand the date for Israel, the symbolism of Israel, and the moment of the church right now. And the question we ask is the following. Israel was living a moment before of his first arrival and Jesus came. And now Christianity is living the same thing today, distracted in the same way that Israel was. And Jesus is at the door to arrive. And this is what is important for the church to understand tonight. Amen. The Lord has revealed and there is a woman of 43 years of age that thinks that she will never serve the Lord because she is too attached to the material things and she has an addiction. And when we sang, I will give it all to the Lord, she realized that she was empty, that nothing would fill the emptiness in her heart. This woman that thought that we should, would never serve the Lord because she would attach to the material things and, and addiction. And I'll, I'll tell you, addiction is something very interesting. I have a friend, had a friend that used to say, Amadeo, you were alienated. I would never be a Christian. Because you always uh, give satisfaction to the pastor. I didn't want people to uh, ask me. Uh, not to do this or that. You go to a um, dance club. No, I don't go. Why not? Why not? You go there to have fun. I don't need it because I go to church. My joy is to be there. Glorify and singing. Why do I go to go to a dance club? I don't need this. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not l attached to anything. I'm free. Then I turned to him and said, How much do you expand uh, of a cigarette every day. Let go of it. It's, it's, it causes cancer in the esophagus, stomach, the lungs. If you escape of cancer, you may have a, a, a heart attack. You're a doctor, you know that. And I said, yeah, so let go of this. Uh, but I can't. This I tried everything. So, okay. So you're not free. I am. I'm free of... Uh, you know why? Because the Bible says that if the Son of Man frees you, we'll be truly free. So the church does not forbid me of anything. No, no, Amadeus, no. You drink, no. Why not? I don't need to drink. Yeah. But you know to dance club, not even to drink on a, a soda, no. Know what happened? with that individual, th this friend of mine. They were having a discussion and the following week they were there upset. And they sat down and I came and they said, you know what, you're right. They went to a party on the dance club. There was a fist fight and one of them had a gun shot and one of their friends ended up crippled. And he was really upset. And I, I said, that's right. We don't use guns. Nobody uses guns. We, we don't use guns, but uh, we have swords. But our swords don't hurt. The sword uh, hit, uh, hits the heart, right? It's a wonderful thing, right? So we are happy. Right? What, what are we going to sing now?
the church to stand up, Lord, we praise your holy name for our presence in this place, for the operation of the grace, Lord, we glorify you for your church, for those that came to your house to glorify you, prepare, Lord, us for this day, prepare every heart here, help us, Lord, to overcome our trials, in your name we say the wonderful grace of, of Jesus of the love of God, the eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit will be with you now and forever. Amen. Of course, at this day, the church may be seated. There's a lot of people working, right? There are a lot of people working. I'm just hoping that on 31st, nobody will be working. Are you coming on 31st? Are you coming? Do you? Yeah. Oh, you come. Look. And I'll be here 31st. I want to look at each one here that is, that is here that didn't come on the 31st. Youth that doesn't come on service of a vigil, it, it takes five years longer to get married, you know? Five years. Five years to get married. Uh, yeah. So you have time, right? Okay. <laughs> 